Hello, it's Mr. Turk, and um, today I'm just going to run you through a real quick tutorial for the Alphabet Project. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you know where all your Alphabet uh, photos are. And I took a couple of quick photos of some fruit in somebody's kitchen, and uh, I, I made sure I relabeled all my files. So to relabel a file, just simply click once and then click again on the file name. And then you can just type in the name of the file. Uh, we could name this A, Turk, um, just so that I know that's my A image. When you know where your files are and you're ready to bring them into Photoshop, uh, go down to the Start menu. Click on Photoshop. We can click on the Photoshop shortcut. When Photoshop opens, um, you can go to File New, or you can go to Create New. Uh, when the New Document dialog box opens up, uh, make sure you give your file a name. Again, last name, first name, middle name, and then your project title, which will be Alphabet. And then um, you can actually make your file a little bit larger this time. You're going to have a lot of images to cram in there. You can keep it in a half by 11 if you want to print it out later. Um, but you could make it bigger. Uh, you can make it 12 by 16 and give yourself a, a little bit more space. Uh, when you got your file parameters made, click Create. All right, when your file opens in Photoshop, the first thing you're going to do is pick a location to save it so that uh, you can save all your changes and you don't lose any data. Uh, if your computer crashes or, you know, the power shuts off or something bad happens. Uh, so you're going to go to File, Save As. If you already gave your file a name, that name should be in the file name. Uh, field and you're going to leave it as a Photoshop document because you're going to want to be able to go back to this document if you need to replace some old photos or change something later. Uh, make sure you know where you're saving your file. So I'm actually going to go to the alphabet folder. Uh, click on alphabet project and now I'm in the alphabet folder. I'm going to leave my file name, my last name, my first name and the project title. I'm going to leave it as a Photoshop document and click Save. Whenever you're working on your Photoshop document and you're making edits or changes, uh, frequently hit con Control S to save. Okay? You need to remember to hit Control S every time you do a change or an edit so that you save your file. Um, there are no excuses if you don't save your file. You just have to get in the habit of making sure that you save your file every couple of minutes or so. All right, when you're ready to place some images into your um, open Photoshop file, you're going to go to File and Place Embedded. And you're going to click on that option. The Place Embedded dialog box is going to open up. And right now it's open to the folder where I've saved my file, and that's where I keep my alphabet photos. So. It's really easy to navigate here, and I'm just going to click on my A file, and then I'm going to click Place. All right. Now my file is real large, um, so I can actually shrink it a little bit right now if I want to. One thing you want to avoid when you're manipulating the size of your file is just clicking and dragging without holding down the Shift key. Uh, if I see you do this, I'm going to tell you to cancel the placement and go back and go File, Place Embed, and replace the file. You never ever want to distort your image. If you're going to resize your image at any point in time, make sure you hold down the Shift key and click and drag. And that will keep the original proportions of your image. If you don't want to hold down the Shift key, go up to your Options bar and click on the Maintain Aspect Ratio uh, little icon here. It looks like a chain link. If you click on that, you can click, click and drag on your corners. You'll notice that it just keeps the original ratio of your photo. Once you've got it a little bit smaller and up in the corner, you can click on the um, 
check mark here to commit your transformation. You could hit the enter key or you could double click on the image. When your image is placed into your document, uh, you can click and drag on it uh, to move it around. And the uh, transform controls are always by default active. So if you ever need to resize your image, again, hold down the shift key and click and drag to shrink it. And then hit the check mark to commit your transformation. You can do this at any point in time, but again, I don't want to see you distorting your image. If you ever do that, cancel that transformation. I don't want to see any distorted images. All right, let's say we're ready to place our second image. You're going to use the same set of steps. You're going to go to File, Place Embedded. We're going to place our B photo. Click on the B and click Place. Same thing, it's nice and large, so this time we're just going to check mark the little maintain ratio box. We're going to shrink it, we're going to move it over here, and we're going to hit the check mark. So you're going to continue to place your images, um, place all your images, and uh, it's going to take a little bit. I'm not going to place all these images in here, I'm just going to place two or three, just for the sake of the argument that we have our whole project in here. And I'm going to show you a couple of extra things. Okay, I've got a couple of images in here. And um, one of the basic things you're going to learn about Photoshop is that you can uh, kind of select your images by clicking on them. This is an upgrade. You used to have to go to the layer panel. And the only way to switch between images was by clicking on a separate layer in the layer panel. And then you could move it. Uh, now Photoshop's a bit more advanced and you can just click on the image. If you're not sure which image you want to click, uh, you can right click on it and it should pop up your options. It'll tell you how many layers are layered on top of each other. and It'll give you the option to select layer C or the background layer. Let's say we want to overlap um, my letter C with my letter B here and get a little bit creative with how we're putting these images together. In my layer panel, you're going to notice that the layer C is above layer B. So that means if I click and drag layer C over layer B, it will overlap layer B. If I don't want that to happen and I want um, this image to overlap this one, I'm just going to go to my layer panel and I'm going to put that layer above the other one. And that's going to change the stacking order for my layers. Let's say I wanted to have a little bit of fun and um, add a couple of fancy effects to my layer. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. If you go to your layer panel, and let's say I wanted to add a little bit of a shadow around this image right here. Um, I'm going to double click on my B layer. And that's going to open a very complex menu called the Layer Style menu. Uh, this is a dialog box with a ton of options. We're just going to add a drop shadow. So we're going to go down to the drop shadow out option and we're just going to check mark that. And that's automatically going to add a little bit of a shadow around our image. Uh, if we click on that section, you can adjust all of the basic, you know, parameters for that drop shadow. We could change the angle, uh, we could change the distance, uh, we could change how big it is, how small it is, we could change its color. There's a lot of options for this. Um, essentially, you could add a bunch of crazy things to your layers. Um, I highly encourage you to keep it real simple and not add too many. When you're done messing around with all this stuff, click OK. And at any point in time, you can go back to that layer effect. And if you want to, you know, adjust it again, you just got to double click on it. And that will open the layer style dialog box up again. And you can adjust it from here. Again, this is all completely optional. Another option for you, if you want to line your images up, uh, let's say you want it to be real nice and neat and organized, uh, that's really easy to do. Uh, go to View, 
and make sure rulers are visible. There should be a little check mark next to the rulers uh, option in the view menu. Uh, the rulers are these numbered tick marked little sections of your window. And from here you can click on your ruler and drag down a guide. A guide is essentially uh, a line for you to kind of guide your images with. So if I wanted to line up my images on this straight line right here, I could click and drag that guide down. And then I could move my images around and line them up with that guide. And that would keep all of my images in a nice straight line. Uh, let's say I wanted them all to be the same size as this letter A here. Uh, I could click down another guide. And then I could use my transform tool to kind of line it up. And that's a really nice way to make the images look nice and uniform. When you're all done uh, editing your ABC file, your alphabet file, um, make sure you uh, save it frequently as a Photoshop document. And then uh, make sure you save it as a JPEG as well to hand in. Uh, to do that, go to File, Save As, and then change the Save As type to JPEG. And then make sure you know where you're saving it and click Save. And click OK. And that's how the Alphabet project should go. Make sure you place all 26 files into one file and rearrange them however you want. Mess around with layer styles, do whatever you want. Um, just so long as the whole alphabet is there, all 26 images. And save it as a Photoshop file and save it as a JPEG file.